Wow, you really got some cool stuff in here. Yeah, I can. Check out that Batman piece over there. In the front right here, right there, up on the top shelf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those are some fun movies. Have you seen those Batman movies? Uh, only like the first one, yeah. I think. Yeah, the Joker's my Batman. favorite character. Oh, you got bullets over here, too. Yeah, these little ones. Nice. I got this one over here. Yeah. You see? Oh, that's a big, that's a big one. You see that big old bullet there. That's really cool. Very sweet. Careful. Ten ounces of pure silver. What caliber is that? It's the silver caliber. The silver caliber. <laughs> that'll, that'll take out some werewolves right there. Beautiful. Thank you for showing me that. Yeah. Anything else? Um, man, there's just so much to look at in here. How about this 10 ounce silver bar right here? How much is that? Too much for you. Yeah, I don't have any money today, but I'll think about it. Thanks for your help. All right, yeah, you're welcome. Have a good day. You too, thanks. Monster Coin. Alright Robbie, so before we jump into the fun, maybe we can go over a few coin shop etiquette rules. Um, especially for our new viewers. What's really important to keep in mind when you're coming to a coin shop? If you ask to see a coin, you know, for example, you want to handle it with care, right? Most coins that I'm going to show you are in holders. If they're not, you want to hold them by the rims. Don't put your hand on the field of the coin. So that's that's a big one just in terms of handling stuff. Um, if I'm working with somebody, buying something from somebody or selling something to somebody, you wanna you wanna give that person, you know, I wanna give that person my attention. So getting trying to get involved in a deal that's not your deal is kind of poor etiquette. Very poor etiquette. The worst etiquette I could think of would be to undercut the dealer right there in the store where I say, Hey, I'm gonna pay you a hundred dollars for this, and another customer chirps up and says, I'm gonna pay you uh 125 right here yeah. in, the, in the store. So that's that'll get you banned from your local coin shop, no yeah. doubt about it. <laughs> so, yeah. So, Robbie, as a coin shop owner, you must have some interesting stories of people trying to come in here and rob you or take advantage of you. Can you share any of those with us? I have never, I have never in all my years of doing coin shops and pawn shops been involved in a robbery situation. And I am very thankful for that. And I hope. Knock it, on some wood, Robbie. It stays that way my whole life. You got no wood in here. I got no wood in here. Knock on your noggin. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, the, the general procedure for getting robbed in a coin shop at gunpoint is that you give the person whatever they want. There's yep. nothing, in, you know, there's nothing in this building that's worth somebody's life. So that's, that's the operating... Yeah, I like that quote from um, Lord of War, and he says, I think they want us to get down on the ground. What the hell are you doing? Let me give you a little advice I picked up in Somalia. When a shaky 10-year-old points a gun in your face, you do whatever the fuck he wants. Now get down here. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with that. Uh, the most common scam you're going to encounter in my position, something like this. Like, Angel brings these in, right? Mm -hmm. She's going to sell them. Let's say it's a gold chain or um, gold coin. I say, oh, I'll give you, I'll give you a hundred dollars for this, and then she says, uh, let me think about it. She puts it in her pocket, starts walking towards the door. Right before she's at the door, she turns around, walks back to the counter, and she says, you know what? I, I'll, I'll do it. I'll take it. And what I'm not thinking is that it's not the same piece that I just looked at. Swapped out. She's, it's been swapped. Like so, every time something leaves the counter and comes back to the counter, you got to start over the deal. And sometimes you're moving fast and, don't and, even realize. and you don't realize yeah. that it's not the same piece you just looked at. Well, wow. Right. And so that one is very common. Uh, usually when people have fake coins in here that they're trying to sell, Nine out of ten times, they genuinely don't know that the coins are fake. They got them in a flea market, you know, and... Motherfucker. Motherfucker. It's 
fake, bro. It's fake. They just yeah. did. They just didn't know. So very rarely have I encountered a situation where somebody has a le legitimately fake piece, knows it's fake, and is trying to pass it off as real. It does happen. That's why we have our Sigma machine. Yeah, and I was just in New York with um, Stack That Gold, and he. He just found out, he sent a piece off to get grade and it came back as uh, unauthentic. Ouch. But it, it was supposed to be a pre-1933 uh, gold piece. And what they did was they actually took pre-1933 gold, melted it down, and, and re-stamped a, a coin with it. So if you put it on the Sigma, it'll test as authentic. But when you send it into the pros, it comes back oh, as fake. Because the gold is real, but the coin yep. is fake. That's right. The gold is real, but... Right. They're adding that numismatic value to it. Right, and when you think about one of those little $5 gold pieces, there's some really rare ones that have a whole lot of numismatic value. And so, even you could make it out of real gold, and if you're successfully able to scam somebody, you're gonna it's going to be a major payday. Yeah. Double even, your money right the gold there. is so much less than the numismatic value of the coin. No. So, I've heard of that. So what are some of the consequences the people that do come in here and try to take advantage of you or steal from you, you know, other than the police getting involved? Yeah, so the police will definitely get involved. If somebody has fake merchandise, you, you can almost be guaranteed a dealer's going to file a police report. Um, I've heard of different ways to handle it among different shops. Uh, the one thing you can probably be sure of is that because it is kind of a niche industry and all the coin shops will talk, um, they're going to inform each other. If they know somebody's running around with fake merchandise around town, they're going to say, hey, look out for this guy. Um, and now with the internet, you know, with these Facebook groups and stuff, I mean, they'll they'll screenshot the footage of the people in the building and it'll yeah. be on Facebook as soon as they're out. Hey, the guy in the white hat and, you know, the girl in the flowery jacket right. are running around with fake fake coins. Uh, I, I have, I do know dealers who once they've got the fake coins in their possession, they will, they will hold them. They will refuse to give them back. Um, you know, and uh, some of them will give them back only after they stamp copy on it. They have like a, um, what are those? Like what are those? a counterfeit. Yeah, like a count stamp. counter stamp machine. They might stamp copy on it, and that's the only way to give it back, that the customer can get it back. Um, so the main thing is that if you have fake merchandise and a dealer knows that you have fake merchandise, He's gonna be telling the other pawn shops and the other coin shops in the area. I would do that. Yeah. If I if I knew, I would I would call across town. I would call the shop up the street and I would I would tell them, hey, watch out for this person. They're running around with fake Morgans or you know right. something like that. And we're kind of spoiled down here in the south because you know I've asked a few coin shops down here, including you, about fakes coming in, and it's you know maybe one every six months or one a year or something. Man, when I was in New York City last week, I was asking them, they, they were pulling out boxes full of hundreds of fakes. They're like, they come in here every day, every day, all 90%. They're, they're faking quarters, they're faking gold, they're yep. faking everything you can imagine. Yep. It's New York just City's insane. faking everything. Yeah, period. it's the, the <laughs> right. fake capital of the world. It's, yeah, it's like a numbers <laughs> game. It's a numbers game, too. I mean, you know, if you have a shop and you've got, I don't know, 20,000 people in and out of that shop every month, more likely. You're, you're going yeah. to right. have some fake, fake stuff. I mean, it's just it's just a numbers game. So, Robbie, it's been a while since I've been in here. You got anything you want to show me? I do. I just got I just got a shipment of silver in and restocked on my Second Amendment nice. items. So, we got some one-ounce silver 45s right there at... Uh, Thirty-seven dollars each is what I'm selling those for, and I think I think we've shown this piece before. This is a two-ounce pure silver revolver, Republic of Chad, wow. five thousand piece mintage. Um, comes in a nice little box. Um, Africa's really, putting out some really good stuff. One of the coolest things about this piece to me is the capsule, <laughs> a gun-shaped capsule. Yeah, it's just so so cool to me. Um, is this accurate? What do you mean? Like this is actually what this would look like if it was a real gun, yeah. not silver. I don't. I don't know if it's a model of an actual gun, but yeah, I mean it, it's. I mean, it looks it's like an accurate looking revolver. Yeah, they've got some pretty revolvers that have been made. Whoa! It yeah. has the heart, the diamond, yeah, isn't that cool? the spade. That's cool. Two seventy five is what I'm asking on this, and then we got a fifty cal around check here. Check that thing out, man. 
That's bring Ten me. ounces, pure silver. That's bring me back to my military days. Yeah. I probably probably fired a million of those things off. They did they shoot out of the big yeah, like, chain gun? Yeah, I had a uh, the 50 cal machine gun which we mounted on the back of the truck and I also uh, put quite a few rounds through the sniper version of that. Which is crazy because the sniper version I, I put about 30 rounds through it one day and I couldn't feel my right shoulder the next day. Wow. It was just insane. That much that much juice in those that things. That much huh? juice. Yep. Wow. So is it is it even possible for a civilian like me to have the experience of shooting one of those guns that's mounted on the back of a uh, I don't know if you'll ever have a chance to shoot it. Okay. You could if you had the money. There are there are millionaires out there. You can get a special permit and all that, but if you have the money, you can go to space these days. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't even. Money you can do and honestly, money. I don't even know. These must be. I mean, it must be like five dollars a bullet these days. Right. I mean. Right. Wow. Crazy. So yeah, I'm asking three seventy on this. Um. So very cool. Yeah, and then I guess you know it's not it's not Second Amendment. Let me open my safe up here. I, I did get some something kind of cool. I want to show you guys. How's your Lego collection coming, Angel? Uh, the Lego collection's good. I have a little fort. Ooh. It's kind of like a U-shaped fort. Very and I get cool. some more Legos. Robbie, you got some more Legos? I do have some more Legos. I re-upped on the Legos yeah. also. Yeah. So I know you're working on building you a little Lego house out That's of silver Legos. About. So we do have those. And then... Uh, All we need is everybody from the veteran metal community to send Angel one Lego. And boom. She'll have an entire mansion built in about a week. And then I'll dedicate it to you guys. Nice. <laughs> maybe we can maybe we can engrave the usernames on each Lego for yeah, Angel's thank you. house. Build that'd a, be awesome. Yeah, that'd be sweet. I'll take out a little silver value for you. Nice. I got in these silver rounds. Um, oh, Eric wow. Blood Axe, pretty sweet, you know. So it was kind of cool that I ordered silver rounds and I got some some special ones. You know, I'm selling them at the same. Rate is the uh, Buffalo Rounds or the Sunshine Rounds, which really? today is 29 and a quarter. It's going so, up. Get it, yeah, get it while it you is. can afford it, people, because it, it is, is coming going up for a while. So those are kind of cool. I don't, you know, they just, I don't know if, I'll, I won't be able to restock those, I don't think. No, I'm That's definitely cool. going to get some of that on yeah, the way out. Those are cool. Do we know what mint makes those? I don't know. I don't know. Even better. The what make those came out of legendary warriors. So I would think, you know, they've got multiple guys yeah. uh, and multiple designs that's part of a legendary warriors series. But I just, I thought those were super cool looking. I love that. Yeah. That, uh, I like the, like, the, the design, right? All right. So we're going to review the coin shop etiquette. You ready? See how well you were listening. Okay. Okay. True or false, you are supposed to hold the coin by the rim when you are when you are looking at it and the dealer's hand it to you. True or false? True. True. That's ding, correct. Ding, ding. All right. You go home. You find some old coins in your closet. True or false? Before you take them to the coin shop, you should clean them. Get some metal cleaner, get a Brillo pad. Clean that coin up real good before you bring it in to sell it. True or false? True. <laughs> I'm kidding, it's false. <laughs> okay. uh, my heart just dropped. I was like, damn it. <laughs> I thought we went over that one. <laughs> awesome. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. We do not clean the coins. True or false? A good thing to do if you're in a coin shop and a dealer is buying something from the customer would be to try to cut the dealer out of the deal by offering more money to the customer in the dealer's shop. Is that acceptable? Not acceptable. Not acceptable. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> three for three. All right, Robbie. Well, as usual, that was entertaining and educational. I do want to pick your brain on something and maybe uh, bring something up to our followers here. While I was in New York City, I was in the Diamond District, which is supposed to be one of the most authentic places you can go to buy diamonds and metal and all that. And I picked up a coin that was sitting in a silver case around, you know, generic silver rounds. So I didn't have any questions about it. And I paid 30 bucks for this. 
It's supposed to be a, a special forces challenge coin from the seventh group. And then when I got home on uh, and got on eBay, I saw it was going for about 20 bucks, and there's no silver in it at all. So, I kind of it's kind of disappointing. I know it's on me for not asking the questions, but I just want to let people know that just because something's sitting in a silver case and it looks like silver, doesn't mean it's silver. It does look like silver. Definitely agree with you on that. Um, the one thing that I noticed looking at this is that it doesn't say silver anywhere on it. Yeah. And when you see these this kind of edges um, without the reading like that, uh, like a Franklin Mint were to make a piece like this, it will a lot of times say 925 Sterling. Okay. Right there on that edge. So, you know, if a, if a piece is uh, presented as silver and it doesn't say 999 on it, it doesn't say 925, then that's definitely... You definitely want to do some further investigation. Luckily, our, though, it's not. It does have value because it is a yeah, real special force. It's a cool coin. coin. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw the same coin going for as high as a hundred bucks on eBay. But I also saw you know, more modern versions of it going for as cheap as ten. So uh, there's there's the nine 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 silver angel. You want to drop that on that that right there? Let's see about. If we get a uh, bad reading no. there, yep, that's mm -hmm. a not 999. So let's give it a try on uh, Sterling. Let's see if it reads good on Sterling. Uh, negative. Mm -hmm. So, so it. I, I'm I'm pretty confident to say that that piece is not made out of silver. Um, it is cool. Yeah, you know, it's cool. It's it historical. Cool. Yeah. It's. Uh, it's not like the a lot of the challenge coins that I see. You know, they're a little bit bigger. They've got a lot of color on them. Um, so I, that's an interesting coin as far as challenge coins go. Um, here's, a, here's a fun fact about coins. So the United States, some of their real early silver coins had edges like that, right? Mm -hmm. They had those flat edges. Yep. And now they've got the, the reeded edges here, right? They've got those little reed, readings, mm -hmm. uh, reeded edge. And the reason that they, they changed to do that is because back in the day, before that, Guys would shave just a little bit of silver off as they came through, and once you had enough silver shavings, yeah, you, you know you had a had a decent little amount of silver. So that's why they changed the uh, the coins to do that. And these new eagles, this is a 2023. You can see where they left a they left one out right there, and uh, from what I understand, can you see that on your camera? Yeah, yeah. yeah. From what I understand, that's a counterfeit counterfeit deterrent. Um, that's always going to miss it, one. I guess it would be hard to fake that one little reading out of there. I wonder if it's in that particular spot every single time. I think um, every year they, they'll move it around. They did yeah. change it. And I think it started in 2021, maybe maybe 2022. This might only be the second year that they did that. Uh, but it did move. It did move. I think this it's pretty weak compared to, like, you see the Britannia, and it has that, you know, image shifting holographic ability to it and we just take one read out and call it good <laughs> very cool well thank you very much yeah man absolutely we'll see you again absolutely y'all know how to contact me if uh if any of these items interest you, I want to give a I want to give a shout out to Jay in Tennessee. Jay called me and uh, he's been placing some orders. We appreciate you, Jay. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure working with you. And uh, if you're watching, thank you. Thank you, Jay.